and such to reflect on that. Uh, but hopefully in this game, since we now have them on our screens uh, in Champ Select, whatever they do end up uh, with in terms of a draft, that they play towards their conditions properly. Well, let's talk about this draft as we have jumped into it. AAB on the blue side, Verdant on the red, Akali and Caitlyn and Fresh now taken off the table. Both these teams need to start doing some doctoring, get a quick medical checkup because... It's a lifeline for both these teams, and this is this has to be seen as maybe one of the first must-win games of the NLC Division 2. Yeah, no, I, I think so. I, I think, you know, probably more so for Verdant because of the expectations around them, but also for AAB, you know, if, let's say, Verdant after start picking things up in the later stages of the split, being able to say, I've already got my one-up on Verdant is a very, very big deal. Uh, if they are to end up sort of being, you know, starting 0-3, it's hard for me to say they'll, you know, sort of win the rest of it and come first, so maybe you're looking at probably a, a third, fourth, fifth, sort of finish for, for further uh sort of a best case now but saying hey we've got that head-to-head -head, assuming we can pick ourselves up in the middle of the split as well uh going into the second round robin is a very big deal and should be noted as well division one of course doesn't have that necessarily immediate worry division two it's really the same you've got to be playing out and getting victories wherever you can grab them gwen senna and tf also all off the table and the jinx lock in i need to do the the trouble link oh the trouble link yeah the, the, the link, no. who, who would who would have thought uh, who would have thunk it? So it's going to be matched by the Jin. I think we've seen this response a lot. I think Jin, honestly, in my mind, he's starting to become maybe the best AD carry on patch. I think there are obviously very strong options aside from Jin. But whenever I see Jin in the game, he seems to just be winning, uh, regardless of what side has him, a uh, stronger team or not. Uh, I think he's had a pretty decent showing on the Viego, so I wouldn't mind him uh, leaning back onto that one. But also the Hecarim is something that we've seen played to pretty good success amongst the teams that do field it. Uh, and I think being backed up by something as utility based as the Jin from the curtain call. Very, very nice for the setup there. And AB now to respond. I think you probably like to see that jungle uh, sort of match there. Maybe if you want to go for the early aggression, you go into something like Xin Zhao. Of course, can sort of team fight into the Hecarim a little bit as well. Uh, and then perhaps you'll support Jarvan as well. Same kind of thing. You're just looking for team fights. Uh, and that is going to be the option for Bob Asson. You've seen the Corky lock in loads of times. It'll be a bit boring, but at the end of the day, we know what it does. It'll be a safe, stable pick for Blueburn. I'll just be a little bit upset to see him off the Velcos fight. Well, the question being, if they lock in this blind Corgi, has Ericsson been watching uh, well? Has, has Have they watched the Kaiser the response, the Torx special? Well, it's going to be the blind lock-in of the Corgi. Now it's on Verdant whether they want to go for something a little bit special. Zeri would be... Zeri's the same. Certainly... Oh, well, that's... Just hovering it. And uh, I mean, there's the you know, Kaiser. I... Probably just a shout-out. I'm not sure it will get locked in. I think it's such a niche thing that... You know, having worked with Torok very briefly in the past and spoken with him in terms of like sort of development, he is very much player first, very much allowing players to express themselves. And that's why we see people like MNS pulling out things like Kai Samid. Uh, this time around though, I think the Vex makes sense, right? Uh, you've got two champions that are gonna proc the passive uh, with their mobility spells. And of course you've got the, the follow up or the initial engage uh, to work around the Hecker and the double fear stack up uh, is very, very powerful and potent. Now for Verdant, uh, and I'd like to see, you know, come that support pick they you know stack up the engagement whether it's Rakan, whether it's uh Norlis or leona uh, i think these are all supports that aab have to look at and target um and as for verdant looks like they just want to remove any sort of hyper carry or enablers uh, hyper carry enablers uh here uh, the enchanters from aab just to ensure that jinx and uh, the corky aren't buffed up anymore yeah and you could expect to see another one going the same direction of course neither support has been selected yet so the zillion take it off the table is quite an interesting one probably targeted towards winter you've got to imagine it's the latest on we don't yeah i feel like this is something they don't i, I if anything i think assuming toon could play it zillion would be kind of a, a a sneaky pick for themselves to lock in mm. uh on their own end but we'll see what what they end up landing on uh maybe verdant now oh, i'm gonna go for the room i think that makes sense too you've got a lot of dive you've got uh, for now you might be ended up you might end up blinding your support uh, on four and if it's gonna be immediately just remove away the brawn uh, and then, as well, the uh, Camille makes a whole bunch of sense. You've got dive going. Having a, a, an ability to just lock down one of your carries uh, is going to absolutely suck to play against. So I think right now, uh, Verdant, either option towards the top or the bottom side makes a whole bunch of sense. I think you would probably want to blind pick Valkyrie's lane more uh, just because of how important the dragons are. Uh, in the current meta, you've got Jin. You're probably going to have Pryo. I think you go for something very team fight in the top side, like Orn, or like something that buys space in the top side. Uh, and then you can allow yourself to get that counter pick in the support role. But I think Verdant, they're just saying, okay, we know we're going to have an engaged support anyway. Brom's off the table. We don't necessarily care about that. And we can still get counter pick uh, into Gunkus, who, you know, hasn't exactly had the best showing in terms of 
uh, performance. So maybe they're going to look to abuse him on the top side. Uh, but right now, tons of setup across the board for Verdant. I think their lanes are looking super versatile. There's a decent amount of scaling. But if you're talking about touching the ce uh, scaling ceilings of what AAB have right now inside of the Corky, inside of the Jinx, I don't think we're quite matching that just yet. And Gunkus, it looks like he's going to throw down the Mundo blind pick. So Valkyrie, a lot of freedom in terms of what he can lock in. Uh, you could see some super early kill lanes. You could see, yeah, even something really obnoxious like a vein because there's no hard point and click CC right now on AAB. The vein pick would actually kind of discipline a lot of what AB want to uh, want to actually deal with. Obviously, not nice to always talk about hovers because you will see loads of different things cycle through. I think something like the Aatrox are very standard in terms of what they've got going right now. Loads of dive, lots of moving forward. Can always pretty much proc that Mundo shield uh, or the passive in lane uh, off cooldown. So he's never really going to be too fussed about never hitting the mini knock up. Uh, and I think Verdant right now, they've drafted three very strong lanes across the board where they're going to have prior. They've got loads of setup in all of these lanes. AB sort of the opposite right they've got scaling in all three lanes they've got this early game jungler they've got a little bit of setup on the bottom side but other than that they're not really working with too much so if ab can't sort of you know either stem the bleeding stop verdant what i'm expecting to be very fast advance uh after that sort of level six mark for keys they should be okay but if they do let verdant take over the game and they don't hit those core item spikes that sort of two items to jinx two and a half three items sort of the corky i can definitely see them struggling ab do have a very very chunky front line which you've got to give some credit for. We have seen teams just win because their team competition can't get broken down. I can't remember which team it was that ran it last week on Thursday, but there was one team that just kind of built CC, built tanks, and couldn't lose team fights. Because I think it was Domino. Domino. Was it Domino who just... Uh, my brain sent me Domino because they also ran the Sejuan ETF combination yeah. again on, on Tuesday. So I think it was uh, definitely then that did it on Thursday last week. Uh, and, you know, remnants of that sort of in the Verdant comp, right? Different means of CC and different ways to activate it, but it does feel like if, Ver you know, if Verdant get on top of anybody, they should probably just be CC to death uh, more times than not. Uh, and yeah, they're just not, you know, necessarily in, in, in terms of the carries, you know, instant death. Before that sort of like 15, 20 minute mark for, for some of these tanky members, you know, they have means of, of escape, but how consistent is it going to be against all of this hard CC? I guess that's the question yet to be seen. I'm really excited to see this matchup. It sounds like you're verging more towards Verdant in terms I, of liking what they've drafted. Yeah, I mean, I think if you're talking about execution being met, then yeah, if, if Verdant uh, hit all of the criteria, they should be knocking AAB down uh, far enough that you know, AAB don't really have a realistic chance of getting back into it. But I think at the end of the day, AAB's draft, it's very much sort of a, uh, it's an old front-to-back comp, right? Mm. Jinx, Corky, got uh, three tanks. Uh, obviously, Jarvan sort of fits more as a bruiser these days as opposed to a full tank uh, more often than not, but that's what they're working with, right? Uh, we know how those kind of compositions work. They need to make sure uh, that the Jinx and the Corky can actually get to their item spikes in time for, let's say, like that third dragon, uh, or, you know, if they have to give over all three in the, in the early game, fine, that soul point, or uh, that soul dragon itself, uh, that's when they have to be ready to fight. So my question really is for you, talking about how Verdict needs to get going and advance pretty early you've got to imagine or other team that want to be doing it earlier is there just a point in this game where we check in and say are aab sufficiently put in the dirt or are they going to be able to fight is there a like a, is there a clock on this game is essentially what i'm asking it's hard to say i think uh when you take into account like if you're looking at these champions you said one-to-one -one scaling and you look to them all you definitely lean towards aab i think in most cases but i think you have to talk about how these comps actually interact with one another because if keys does something like go the uh sort of conqueror maybe divine sunderer and like true bruiser hecarim build as opposed to a full tank build and then you've also got this uh aatrox who's got three melees that are always going to be on top of him because they're you know engaging while he's going into them uh the scaling aspect is going to be absolutely fine for uh verdant in, in that regard it looks like just based off the phase rush from keys he's probably going to be going the tank uh, iteration of Hecarim, we'll have to see because uh, I do see some junglers sort of veer towards multiple rune paths plus builds at the same time uh, which is definitely a little bit inefficient but I think it can work from uh, time to time but yeah I, I think we'll definitely be checking in you know each dragon takedown every sort of like major objective spawn up uh, for the first 20 minutes or so just getting a look at the items it's not necessarily about the gold we've had quite a few instances I feel like recently where there's been you know six seven even an eight thousand gold lead I was looking at yesterday on uh, in a Div 1 game where, okay, the, you know, the gold lead is, is significant, but if you take a look at the items, that's always the important thing. Mm. Uh, are the items at parry? Uh, has the gold been spent? Uh, and if the answer is, you know, yes, everything's at parry, the gold hasn't been spent, then the gold lead's actually irrelevant. Yeah. This isn't 
TFT with the pirate trait. You're not throwing no. your money at them. No. So it's definitely something that we're going to keep our eyes on. We'll keep checking back in, as we said, and as you do. But we have found our way onto the rift now. A B, of course, on the blue side. Verdant on the red. One of these teams looking to pick up. Well, both of these teams looking to pick up their first win, but only one will be able to do so. Verdant, probably the ones in the driving seat initially. You've got to imagine. But it's not as simple as AAB sitting back and surviving when Verdant have so many tools to prevent them from doing so. You can see Bobas has already gone, grabbed himself his second buff and might look to make a play towards mid lane in the top side. Gunkers and Valkyrie just taking chunks out of each other, which is always good to see. And Tun's actually going to move up here. Ericsson could be in trouble, but Blumen not able to get anything going. And AAB a little bit of wasted time. Yeah, a little bit. Uh, Ericsson doesn't really lose too much for it. Uh, but it doesn't really look like across the board anyone else is missing out on anything crazy. It's just that if you're talking one to one. Oh, from Rivery. oh, okay. Yeah, you're right. Actually, never mind. Looks like when I traded Flash for Flash of Rivery just as we was having that conversation. So it could be a big deal. Could turn into more if uh, Verdant do send numbers down here. Still has the cleanse though, crucially. Uh, and some of the peeling capabilities uh, of Tom Kench in the early game uh, can be very, very strong. Doesn't have the devour like he used to in the old days. Not quite as oppressive, but uh, still a very big uh, health bar. So we have to get in front of as okay. They actually go in yeah, south there behind. Bobas has come in from behind and is looking towards Winter. He hasn't got a flash, remember, so he's just gonna go down. First blood goes over to Rippery on the Jinx. You can't find anything else though. Yeah, cre I mean creative buffing from Bobas, right? We've seen him go uh Gromp into blue, into red. Uh, obviously look for that mid lane gank, didn't quite work out. The Raptors, uh, and then eventually the Skull, and then just moved in behind the uh, the bottom side of Verdant here as a uh, yeah, in trouble. He's on the wrong side of the map. Against. But he is on the wrong side of the map, which means that Aatrox is going to chase him through. IMP is, is just shadowing him along the river, making sure there's no flashy plays. And Winter's here just to provide a little bit more CC. Gunkers oh. is surviving much longer than I thought he would, but now you can see Nautilus is coming on through. Ericsson was there as well, but it will be his lane opponent who picks up the blood. Yeah, and you look at the top side wave as well. It's frozen, slow pushing into Valkyrie. Uh, so Valkyrie will teleport. I think it's just going to crash just barely outside. As long as the cannon's not in range, I think he's okay. But I think the cannon might have just about bad RNG then. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, you can still see that's what seven caster creeps there. So three should hold for a very, very long time. Uh, and Gonkers is going to be in a little bit of trouble. Might fall behind a little bit in CS. I think once he shows up though, uh, unless Valkyrie fins out that wave a little bit, drags it a little bit further away from tower. Uh, Conker should be able to break that pretty much by himself. Keys is on the bottom side, so it's not going to be an immediate punish. Needs to fin this out a little bit more. Maybe. I think that's actually okay. About five creeps for now. Um, Gonkus going to be in a little bit of trouble if Keys does make his way back up here. But not going towards the boss Winter side. in trouble going low once again. And again, it will be Ribery who picks up the kill. I am Keys is moving down now with Tun being a little bit unhealthy. But with Bobas and Ribery... Both being on more than half and no one else moving down. It's going to be swatted out as well. It's just going to be another kill going over to AAB's Marksman. Yeah, I mean, much better from AAB today. Uh, on Tuesday, I was almost a little bit frustrated watching the game, watching uh, Vangstead get so much freedom in the top side in the matchup where, yes, sure, it's a winning matchup, but it's always a lane that you can send numbers to. You had an Ezra on the bottom side that you didn't really care about. Send your support up there as well. Uh, we didn't really see that much proactivity. This game, though, different story, AAB actually chucking numbers down towards a draconium towards winter getting ribbery ahead on this jinx because he is one of their core win conditions and they just kind of recognize vex in the mid lane maybe going to be a little bit too hard to play towards uh, just let blue ben scale up he's equal in cs right now uh, and he's not too fussed about that and ribbery he's picked up both the kills uh, from those ganks so he's being set up for success here now Jamada, i'm a little bit sleep deprived but i've got oh, a question I, I, for you sure um because my mind is not working 100 percent. okay how many vexes do you think Tom Kench could fit in his mouth? Uh, Tom Kench is huge, no? No, that's what I'm saying. Are we, are we talking lore based? Small. Are we talking lore based? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Based Tom Kench? Like, yeah. Oh, uh, I would, I would easily say probably like a hundred, right? Like, like hundred vexes. Yeah, bare minimum, bro. Like, do you do you remember the, uh, the Tom Kench cinematic? Where I he emerges do. from the swamp very yeah. quickly, and he is... He's big. He's lord. Yeah. Yeah. He's our Tom Kench. Yeah. I I reckon he's 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 no diffing at least like 150 vexes. I, I, yeah, I, I'd say pretty comfortable saying to be honest with you. 
It's like that game Chubby Bunnies. Do you ever play that? Where you have to put marshmallows in your mouth? <laughs> yes, actually. Yes. It's like that with Vexes. Sure. Which, I don't know. I can see it. That just seems like a good time. Write Law Team. Make it happen. Next book. Uh, Next book. Realms of Runeterra 2. Let's, let's get it done. But Dragon was taken. Uh, while we were talking about that, AAB secured that one, which makes sense with their dominance on the bot side. Infernal was secured. Ocean will be next up. So, could be seeing one of those new dragons potentially lighting up the rift as things have quietened down a little bit as we come towards rift herald spawn. Bot laners haven't really looked to move just yet. As I say that, Ribery and Tan have recalled and are moving up towards that top side. So, yeah. AAB looking to make their dominance show on both sides of the map now. Yeah, but I will say this might end up uh, leaving Gunkus suffering a little bit more thrown to the, the wolves potentially. I don't know if anything's going to happen really. Could we just get a look at the bomb side wave state? Because I think Draconia might be holding a bit of a freeze. He'll be by himself. No, it's slow pushing it. All right, so Gunkus isn't going to suffer from this too much. But it means that Verdant, they're going to innately have more numbers towards the top side uh, for now. Or it will actually end up being matched by it will be A, B having their stronger side uh, up here. Nunquivar. Berserker Grief Jinx. Obviously, you know, you're not late game fantasy Jinx, but you're still very strong. Uh, and what this will do for Verdant, because this lane swap, is Draconium will get a bunch of solo uh, XP. You can already see he's actually uh, parry with Gonkus right now. A parry of the solo laners, in fact. Draconium is really, really juiced up on XP. Of course, Winter's died a couple of times, and stacked waves and such, so it does make sense. Uh, but that does mean that he might actually be in a much better position than you might think just because Ribery uh, picked up those early kills. Yeah, heading gold, yes, but XP shouldn't really be too much of an issue uh, for him. And despite the first rotation up, the first move from AEB, mm. right now it's Verdant on top of this Herald. Package should be in the back pocket of Bluebin. I didn't actually hear the audio. Yeah, this could be a oh, oh, fight. But it's going to be taken up. Iron Keys will be running away with the objective to die for Trumbo. I think he's top two in the Cataclysm, but no one's been taken down just yet. And Corgi's alone in the back line. Ericsson gets the first kill of the fight. Iron Keys is in trouble, but will be able to ride away for a second longer. Burning low, but won't wow. go down. Thun needs to be careful as Bloomin coming in from the side, looking to put out the damage. Ribery's caught out, though, and will be cut. Traded for Ericsson as Bloomin looks towards Winter, but Valkyrie is a little bit too big, is a little bit too healthy. But Winter Rover stays. The cut down will come through. Absolute bloodbath in the river, but you've oh. got to imagine. Oh. The AAB will not be too happy with that. AAB, I'm going to be happy with that because Verdant, I think Valkyrie just got an unofficial quadra kill. He's got four kills. He didn't have a kill before mm. that, right? So, uh, yeah, that's that's not the best play in the world that we've seen uh, in terms of contesting for Herald. Just a little bit out of sync, maybe. Uh, weren't too sure whether or not Verdant were initially on that Herald or not. I'm not sure about what was happening with the wave states. We were focusing on the bottom side for a little bit, uh, but it was Valkyrie. These Looking kills. to get in on him. Please don't go for the replay yet, producer. As Bobas was chasing onto Valkyrie, but he doesn't go down. Roll the clip. Roll the, <laughs> Roll the clip, Reed. Roll the clip, Reed. Yeah, okay, so here we go. So they definitely knew from around 5 to 10 seconds ago that they were on this Herald, but Blueman's coming back from base with the package. Doesn't have teleport. Maybe he did. He could have potentially teleported to the mid lane to get here quicker. Well, the Herald's gone. The smile's a bit early, but it doesn't matter. This package, though, it kind of knocks them outside of the cataclysm. I'm not sure how detrimental or not that is to AB's team fight here uh, but you can see on the backside uh, Tung gets clipped by that Vex armor and then of course uh, because Jarvan goes down so early on in the team fight Valkyrie just kind of had free reign to do whatever he want, uh, wanted uh, Winter definitely oversteps doesn't seem like uh, Valkyrie was in any trouble there of securing the core key but nonetheless gets involved punishes for it and now Aatrox on the top side He's Gore Drinker already. At, I'm pretty sure he bought it before 10 minutes. And now 11 minutes into the game. And I mean, this is the interesting thing because we said that it had to be Verdant who were making the calls or making the decisions. And that team I was opted into by AAP. Yes, I mean, Verdant having the quicker finger on the trigger when it came to grabbing the Rift Herald meant that they were in the dominant position forcing the fight potentially, you could say, with the commitment coming through from AAP. But it was kind of given to Verdant and they were behind in terms of kills, in terms of gold going into that fight. Now they've got themselves into a pretty comfortable little lead that you've got to imagine that they're going to be pretty happy with. Yeah, and they've got the Herald as well, so it's only going to get larger. Uh, curious to see where Keys will actually drop this Herald. Right now he's on the top side. There's only around a minute and a half left on the Herald. He will reset though, so hmm. I would imagine, considering how far ahead Valkyrie is now, You'd probably want to give it to Draconium, maybe the mid lane, just because there's so much wave clear and siege power uh, from the Corky and the Jinx. 
Uh, just chipping that tower out honestly can have a lot of uh, later on results where if you pick up the second Herald, then you can just drop it in the mid lane yourself and then just get the tower for free. Right now, Verdant, they're focused on picking up this second dragon. They don't want to give uh, AB any more uh, of those, any potential sort of early soul condition. I don't think AB would be able to contest the dragon after this regardless anyway, but they themselves now get the dragon stacking up. As Valkyrie, I mean, pops the R super early. Gonkus has yeah. flash and R. I mean, the power's there. The ultimate's been burst, but Gonkus will be able to step back, and we're going to see what soul it is. It's the cloud soul picked up this game, or could be picked up by either of these two teams. We're both taking one of the first two initial dragons. It's a long road ahead until that one comes into play, but pleased by how Verdant have responded to early game frailty, you could say. Uh, but AAB... They'll have a Jinx that's not doing it too badly. That being said, 20 gold down, 20 farm down. Rift Hell being dropped in the bot lane to help Draconium out a little bit more, as you suggested it might be. But there could be a fight coming on through. Tom looks for the engage, but we'll get rooted up himself. There's a decent amount of CC, but Bobas and Bluebent are both here. I'm Key's already been cut off a little bit, as Winter once again is the victim. Fourth death of the game, and no charge from the Rift Hell. That's got a sting. Yeah, that's really got a sting. Especially when, you know, we was talking about mid lane drop down, maybe. Of course, Draconium was the other option. They go for the bottom side plate. It doesn't quite work out. Keys is going for some counter jungling here, but he's going to be spotted out. We'll lose out on that. Interact camp won't be able to steal that one away. And yeah, I mean, again, AB, if it happens around the bottom side of the map, it seems to be working for them. And this tower, not going to be bullied on any longer. Uh, Valkyrie getting a really nice trade here on Skunkus. Not that much return, though. Oh, available for Mundo as well. You've got to imagine that he's going to be ready to pop that one. Inject himself with some fun and looks to turn the fight around. But decides against. So I think Valkyrie giving a lot of respect as well with the World Ender also being unavailable for that fight. But now back off cooldown. So we could see a more interesting exchange up on the top side of the rift. But 14 minutes in. Of course, plates have just fallen off. So if we could have a quick look at the gold, please, Mr. Reed, just to see where we're sitting decently in the top side of valkyrie as you mentioned but pretty dead even especially look at the mid lane and bot lane yeah i think basically everywhere you look with the exception of the jungle as well uh and i think for ab that's, that's the place where it matters right being sort of at parry with jinx and um, with corky that's where you're happy uh, for now jarvan obviously a little bit more low economy doesn't necessarily always need a bunch of gold to function and do his job and mundo i think goes about saying yes being ahead or uh, having a lot of gold is very nice for them, though. But again, tank items relatively cheap, unless it's going to go into that Sunfire Cape. Uh, so he will be a okay. I think, honestly, Verdant, I think especially off that Herald, would maybe wish to be a little further ahead than they currently are. Or the Herald fight, rather, not the Herald drop itself. I think it's uh, important to distinguish those two uh, incidents. As AB will be taking this tower here. Give that one over to Ribery. Actually pushing on the bottom side. It seems like they just kind of... They understand Verdant. They're on the top side right now. They don't really want to contest uh, the Herald at all. Gonkus is still here defending the tower itself. But not a threat of a dive right now. And maybe AAB go for a little more on the bottom side. I mean, Aatrox doesn't have a whole bunch of wave clear. But bunch of damage, yes. Bunch of healing as well. Try and chip away. But they shouldn't really be able to find more than that. Yeah, the wave wasn't there. So they're going to be forced to back away. Top side tower was held for a while. And with Iron Keys... Sticking around, potentially maybe looking just to defend, not going to be dropping the Rift Herald on that occasion. And Tun and Ribery might be getting away scot-free just using that target ultimate for a little bit of safety. But it will be an exchange on the top side from Towers 1 apiece now moving forward. And this game, very close, and you'd expect that from two teams on the same scoreline. But it's felt a little bit cagey even with initial burst of energy. But now it's really, really slowed down. Yeah. Definitely has slowed down. And I think you'd definitely say that benefits AAB more than it does Verdant. Though again, I think the scaling, just because the way the comps interact, Verdant are going to be fine for a little longer than maybe you would initially anticipate. Uh, just because of the short range of half the comp of AAB. Of course, Blue Ben, Ribery, that's where the range comes from. But again, so much forward movement, so much dive comes out from Verdant. If AAB can't, uh, as a collective, position properly, keep Ribery and Blue Ben. Uh, in a safe position. The range won't really matter too much for uh, these sort of on oncoming fights, uh, potentially. 
As it seems like Verdant just want to set up for this next dragon at the moment. Also, maybe even them get a look in here at this mid-tier one, which AB caught their pants down a little bit. Not quite in position to defend this one. Ribery forced off the tower entirely. And that will be that mid-tier one going over now. It's traded in top side, so Bluebin gets a little bit of gold uh, in response. And his Muramana is almost stacked up. He's 3-1-0. Not too bad on the CS department either. Level 12. Got those level 11 rockets in uh, already. But I think, especially we were sp speaking about how Draconium earlier on had a whole bunch of uh, solo XP. You can see now it's starting to differentiate between the two AD carries. Rivery level 9, Draconium level 11. And those kind of markers are going to matter a lot. When you talk about having a level 2 ultimate uh, to level up, 1. As, yeah, that's the world end up. Cataclysm will be used and Bobas will use it just to slide away. Valkyrie going to be caught angrily behind that wall as the dragon goes down for to pick up the second of the game for themselves which is the first cloud of the game. But yeah, this is what we're talking about in terms of gold. Being dead even, you look at the item breakpoints. You look at where people yeah. are strong, where these levels are taken. And games on a knife edge, basically. Second tower went up on the top side, but of course you look at the Rift Herald still being in the pocket of Iron Keys. And with that mid tower already being taken by Verdant, they can look to make even heavier inroads in that lane, or they can look to just get a cheap and easy tower in the bot side, which is still on the outer. Yeah, exactly. You go for the gold or you go for uh, maybe a little more freedom of movement by taking down that bottom side tier one, but it's not really impeding them anywhere on the map right now. Ribery's in Ooh, trouble. He's on top of Ribery, but Tonk gets their gobbles up the jinx and will spit her out towards the base. IMT is still fighting forward. They can use a depth charge onto Tun and he might have saved his marksman. Actually, will get out himself through the gate as Bobas is also in the vicinity. But a good little play there from Verdant, just looking to grab those picks and next time, Tub might not have his ultimate. Yeah, Tun might not have his ultimate indeed. They still get the flash off both those members of AAB though, so uh, not the end of the world. Further than a repeat try, it probably results in success this time around as uh, Herald is going to be dropped on the bottom side and this tower is actually going to go down. Ericsson should execute it before the charge comes in. So this will hit the tier two, assuming he doesn't get unlucky. Okay, there we go. Nice. <laughs> I was uh, worried for a second where he started walking away, but he did manage yeah, to yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. As was I. But uh, this should be a tier 2 charge. But I mean, AB actually have the numbers Fight, here to defend. Though. And Verdant again. Oh, they're going to leave it away though. Because Teleport's coming on through from both sides. We're going to see a full fight. Nice package uses the cut off Ericsson oh. and Winter. But Blumen now needs to be careful to back away. Of course, the charge did now hit through. Because AB stops in the defense. Spell immunity will keep Mundo rolling his iron keys on the flank. Looking for something but can't find it. And will back away. The end, a lot of a lot of bark, but no real bite from either of these teams in this engagement. Yeah, exactly. And package now gonna be a little bit out of sync for the next dragon if they were looking to contest it. But you can definitely appreciate Abe you going for a play like that. Uh Valkyrie's teleport is just about enough to dissuade because honestly that was a really nice package. It cut off the retreat for uh, more members than it didn't. That could have been a couple more kills going into AAB's back pocket, but Burden able to Respond appropriately, not actually drop any members themselves. And now the scaling game temporarily continues as Ribery actually went into more reminder to cut into the healing, obviously, of Valkyrie, but I don't know if I really agree with this. You're one of the two hyper carries. I think you just allow Bobas to go, you know, either into Bramble or just like sit on executioners. You've already got uh, the Bramble there as well. a little bit of any healing on Gonkus, assuming Valkyrie actually hits him. Not too sure I agree with this. I think, you know, you have to go PD. You have to go Lord Dom second or something like that. Something to burn through this front line. My damage is going to be a little low. Yes, you're going to apply the, the anti heal, and that can definitely be important. But is it going to chew into your damage per minute? We'll have to see how it actually affects uh, his damage output. Mm. Might mean... not be the end of the world at the end of the day. That's definitely useful to have, especially against the Aatrox, as you mentioned. Yeah, so of course. It's just a case of keeping eyes on River in the next couple of fights. If River is yeah. able to free fire, are we going to be expecting to see the same kind of damage that we usually see from a two-item Jinx? Probably not with that second item. But AB needs to be careful. Tom's being caught up, sleeping with the fishes. The damage coming through as Draconium secures the kill. Now onto the second tower, going down sharpish. Easy take from Verdant, and they'll be able to back away or continue on. Looks like they've got a small minion wave, but don't want to continue as they move down towards the bot side. Gunkus 
might be on an island on his own, but should be able to get away. He's got an important business meeting to attend. As Bobas and Ribery move down to help defend, but the tower's going to be felled and verdant. We were saying that they needed to pick up the pace in the earliest stages of the game, but it seems like it's taken until the 20 minute mark for them to really step on the gas. Yep. It's taken them a little while. I think, admittedly, though, AB haven't really put themselves in too many positions where Verdant have been able to pounce, but now the gold lead sword balloons out around 4,000 gold. But I remember that conversation we had towards the beginning of the game. Okay, 4,000 gold, definitely very big. But it's about the item differential one right now. There's definitely some differential between some of these carries. Uh, on AB and Verdon, especially the top side. Uh, complete items across the board, two complete items for the entirety of the top side right now. Only a mythic or first item plus components for the top side of AB. Uh, the only place where it's parry right now is the bottom side of the map. Uh, and even then, you can technically say Draconium, you know, he's got hard hitting items, right? Uh, for his champion, just because he has that Lord Doms, that means he's going to be able to cut through that front line a little more efficiently than maybe Ribery will. Of course, Ribery's build a little more about uh, potentially. Uh, you know, of course, the utility and cutting down the healing. Onto the third dragon, it's Verdant again. First to move. And that Jinx Ultimate is not even going to come close to stealing this one away. So it will be taken up, setting themselves up for soul point at around the 28 minute mark. So keep your eyes on that one. Maybe set a little alarm on your watch just to make sure that you're keeping an eye out. I'm sure Verdant will be. And AAV needs to start because. Losing out on Cloud Soul. While it's not huge, there's a couple of champions on this Verdant side who are going to like it in a pretty major way. Yeah, definitely so. I think Cloud, uh, like you're saying, going to like it in a major way for Verdant. Hecarim, movement speed. Valkyrie, moving faster on the Aatrox. Very, very scary. Even Vex probably doesn't even mind the movement speed amongst the uh, chaos of a team fight. Uh, and on the opposite side, a couple of decent users as well for AB, but... It's about whether or not they'll get it. And right now, it feels like Verdant should have very stern control of the game. At least by champion scaling for the next sort of five or so minutes. Uh, AB, I think they really need to try and take control uh, of their own topside jungle for now. Don't get strangled out here. Because if you get strangled out here, then it really gives Verdant the opportunity to just consistently find pincers. If you guys decide to move in, but they're not doing Baron, all of a sudden Hecarim's on your face. Vex is on your face. Valkyrie's flanking the back line on the Aatrox. They can keep this tier two as well. I think that'll be really, really important. Just to keep things a very shallow vision in the jungle so they can always enter. Mm. That's the biggest thing for them right now. But again, Verdant doing a really great job of just strangling AB out of their jungle, slowly but surely. And I mean, if you toggle vision for a second for Verdant as well, you can kind of see just the, just the flag of Javan right now. That's what's giving them the vision. Other than that, not really working with too much. One shallow ward in the jungle is all they've got. As a oh, Winner actually got chunked out. He got, by the he got river. Yeah, we didn't even catch that. It's not even a chunk, it's just dead and Verdant. Just like that, the control is gone. AAB can move up into the river. And once again, Winter, the the Nautilus this game hasn't really been working out. Yeah, Nautilus. Uh I mean he's been picked on I I mean it's not as bad, but I'm getting Den Den flashbacks. I think he was here with me with that. Maybe it was a uh, I think it was Archer. Where uh, I think it was Flong versus uh, Domino. And yeah, let's just say the Nautilus was. Wherever Shafty was, the Nautilus was. And uh, then then was not having a great time about it. As uh, we'll get a replay of what happened on the top side. And I think maybe just overcommit, step too far forward. Look for the hook. Yeah, of course. But then didn't quite see how low he dropped. I mean. Ah, Corky Rocket. All right, it's just it hidden under the health bar just because of the way that we have the HUD. I didn't quite get to see how low Winter was. All right, now it makes a little more sense. Constantly standing on top of each other and behind people, Winter was. So caught off guard by the amount of damage he ate. As a, I will forever love that Corporate Mundo skin. Coming out of base on the car. Such places skin. to be. Places to be. Yeah. He's, he's a busy man. Is Armando and meanwhile at the top side, we're seeing a smaller version of what we just saw with both teams fighting for that vision. AAB, a little bit of shallow vision, Verdant trying to gain control, especially over the river entrances, because Baron has been on the map for about five minutes. There's been no concerted effort just yet for either of these teams. AAB have a pretty decent Baron take. Verdant don't strike me as having such a good one, but River just gonna use that ultimate just to check over. No one's there, so. 
That's unavailable, but do Verdant need to grab a pick before they can look to do that objective? Uh, I mean, I think Verdant right now, they're strong enough that, you know, a pick wouldn't be necessary, but I think if you get a pick, it just makes things a lot simpler. I'm not having to deal with some of the poke of Corky if you're on, on an objective or, you know, the potential of uh, package plus all the follow-up from Ribbery and uh, Bobbers and such. I think getting a pick is the safer option, and they've definitely got the setup and the control on the map to do so. A pick would just make the path to success easier. It's more or less about whether or not AB actually give them the opportunity. Mm. That is a big whether question. Or, AB... or whether Verdant could grab one themselves. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and I think right now AB more focused probably on this Cloud Dragon. Uh, for now, I think think if I'm blue I'm picking up the package but 30 seconds away he's only gonna have about 30 seconds of a window once the dragon spawns up sorry, I mean, he might off though, yeah. so he might need the speed to get involved a lot of damage coming on for us the cataclysm is there to cut a call on the back side means that Eric's gonna help pick up the first kill of the fight there's the package it's gonna be used to get some damage down but Verdict needs to be a little bit careful as I'm keys on the wrong side of the rip but nice engage from Ericsson as Valkyrie moves forward AAB have lost this fight up to this point but now they're looking to grab some scraps. Gunkers on the side is pretty healthy, but there's going to be a decent amount of damage coming on through. Winter dives forward. The damage the poke is big. Oh, cool My members key. are verdant, but they're all pretty low. And there's still oh, no. Ribery. There's still Blueburn. Valkyrie looks to get the turnaround, get some damage. As Dragonian moves forward, gets the shot onto one, oh. gets the shot onto two. That's <laughs> disgusting from Jin. And just like that, Verdant take a cheeky little dragon soul. You know, I thought to myself, Ribery's like 800 HP. It's the fourth shot from Draconian. I'm, pre I'm pretty sure that he didn't use uh, he used the Q already uh, to execute as well. Just half, just just the removes Ribery of that fourth shot. Absolutely nasty uh, stuff. I had the IE as, re as well already, so definitely makes sense. But my goodness, wasn't quite expecting the uh, the light show <laughs> that Draconium just gifted us with. As uh, yeah, there you go, Verdant. Uh, they find the fight they were looking for in the mid lane. It kind of bleeds into the jungle for a little while. I think for AB, they just had they just had to had Corky be there. And if Corky was there, then maybe the fight looks a little bit different. Maybe the package actually has a little more impact. Yes, it cuts off Verdant. It's advanced for a little while, but it's really not enough. Well, Teleport coming really through, though, AAB need. want to contest this Baron, and actually, but they're going to peel away from it. Decent amount of damage going on to Tun. He's the target, and he goes down. The Cataclysm has used this Bobbers, dives away, but there's not really much follow-up except for Blueman sniping over the wall, but he can't grab a single kill just yet. Ribbery on the other side from his team needs to be a little bit careful as Zogri looks to run through the opposing team. Winter gets the poke. Winter gets the CC as Ribbery goes low. Whoa. It doesn't go down. No one supplies the last hit as Gunkers now needs to be careful diving back into the enemy team. Will flash away, getting a decent amount of sustain but Draconium is massive. Grabs himself a snipe down. Oh, looking Ribery. for the ultimate. But Ribery's long gone. AAB put up a stern test. But they're left wanting. Yeah, left wanting indeed. And now that should just be the Baron going over to Verdant. Took four days of stage games. And uh, apparently 0-3 AAB. But Verdant, I think still it's, it's very safe to say they look a lot more confident than they have done. And with this Baron, given how the last couple of fights have gone, you would imagine bare minimum is cracking open the base here. As uh, Keys drops awfully low, doesn't drop to the Baron as we go get a replay of the original mid uh, fight. Winter gets a nice engage here. Let's take a little while. And of course, the flank, the pincer as well. That's what starts it off. And then this re engage here. You know, imagine you have a Corky coming in on top of this with the package, on top of Ericsson, on top of the, the other two tanks. That fight looks so much different, but it's just not in sync for AAB. The timing's just off. Ericsson does a really good job of uh, just about getting Gonkus off of Keys, because if he does take down Keys and Ericsson's sat there in his face, I mean, Gonkus probably just kills them both, uh, flash or not. And this is when things get a little bit scary. You know, Blueburn dashing forward with the Valkyrie. He's got obviously all his items stacked up. The HP bars are low. Turn damage is great. And then this is just when uh, Draconium. Yeah, let's just say Tell Gale Force right now. Gale Force actually hits Gonkus because he's the lowest target HP. About five, seven, four, execute fourth shot. Oh, the grenade does hit as well at the exact same frame. We don't see the grenade damage, but seven hundred and twenty-two crit <laughs> out of the fourth shot. It's absolutely insane, and this was kind of talking about as well from Ribery's build, right? You imagine if he's got the IE and the Lord Doms at the same time, even in that previous fight, not even the one in the mid lane. Maybe he finds more kills than he's currently got. Because Draconium working at that massive power spike right now. That's why he's able to pop people like that. It really does feel to me. Could be one of the big difference makers here in this uh, game overall. But Verdant 
still firm control in these team fights. AB just been a little bit too out of sync now. There's that base cracked open. Looking towards that inhibitor bottom side as well. Same story. Inhibitors on the siege. AB, they have to do something. They might actually be able to have found this pick here. Ericsson goes golden on a sliver of health. Bobas will be able to get the kill, but he's going to go down. Now, Vernon are turning up in numbers. But Valkyrie needs to be a little bit careful. Jinx is free firing as the damage is big from AAB. Draconium not really in the fight except for the ultimate. Does manage to break over the inhibitor before scarpering. They commit, they lose a member, but they break open the base. Yeah, they do break open the base. They lose a member for now, but they get the inhibitor. That bottom side inhib also chunked out. Uh, Baron buff. At a point where realistically I think Verdon won't be able to get too much more if anything out of it. But job done, mid inhibitor uh, being open means they can just send, you know, Valkyrie, they can send Ericsson to either side and then just play off of that pressure. And Elder spawns in a minute and a half's time as well. I think Verdon's saying very pretty at the moment. As I imagine Draconium also going to base for his four fire and rapid fire cannon is the choice. And how close is Ruby to this IE? Because if he can hit that fourth spot. Oh, that fourth uh, item. Then I feel like he's in a in a good position. And yeah, I think off this wave, he should be good. He might actually need one more wave. But if he's recalling now, I think the combined cost from there is about 1.2k. Uh, and he should have that in inventory. And that's a big turning point. The IE yes. damage can be really massive. And now with that online, maybe it gives AAB a dying uh, shot here. At returning some of the damage as well. I think as well, yeah, Blue Ben needs level 16. Just hits it off some of the XP from that creep wave. And now I think A, B are ready to fight. I just feel like the issue is the top side item differential that could be, you know, sort of the, the problem here. If Keys and Valkyrie are able to run over the team fights and Draconium's kind of left on his lonesome to do whatever he wants, when there's not really too much backline threat for now from A, B. I think Verdant just went out anyway. So A, B really have to do a good job of, you know, enabling Blue Ben, enabling Ribery, ensuring that they can get their damage out. Because if they do, then A, B have a solid shot. Their carries have scaled. They're online. But they have to give them the opportunity to put the damage out. 20 seconds away from Elder. The setup. Not exactly, you know, steadfast from Verdant, but the vision is there. AAB, for the time being, actually could. But I'm not sure they don't understand they have the window right now. Just sneak into the river off this mid lane wave. Verdant actually coming out from a reset a little bit slower. So it might actually end up being AB in the river first. There's keys Ooh, I'm potentially keys. caught out. Caught on his own. Caught in the characters and has to ult defensively even. But Vex going in. Breaks up the fight. River needs to be careful on the side. Getting some damage. Blueman has been targeted. Valkyrie oh. is on the back line. He's already deleted one. But it's neither of the carries as Valkyrie flies away. Gunga's in the back line. is creating all sorts of issues as Rivery picks up a reset. Picks up one. But they're not going to be able to get a Mundo in time. Gunga's is in full retreat. <laughs> as we say, he's got places to be. But that's going to be his own fight. Mounted as Draconium takes him down. AB still have three members with both of their carries still alive, putting out a decent amount of damage oh. as the minions make pain and grab themselves. Oh. The second inhibitor tower, Draconium's gonna spot out members of AB just hanging around. I'm um, Key's still alive, even though he was oh. one who was caught out. Oh, no. Backing away, Ton is deleted. And yeah, the carry stay alive, but no one else does. Verdant pick up the dragon, the elder dragon, and are in a very, very nice position. It plays out almost as we kind of spoke about the potentials there, right? It's the top side, the, it's Keys getting kind of caught out by it's Valkyrie, the other backline diver that causes mayhem in the backside on top of the current call, which is being layered on top on that backside dive because the, a couple of the other members, a little bit too interested in maybe trying to execute Keys because of course, such a vital member. If you get the, the jungler just before that elder spawns, then you have such a great shot actually winning out the fight just because you might be able to secure the elder. I think the split fight just ensures that the frontliners being away from AAB's backliners, Valkyrie, uh, Valkyrie, Verdant have such an easy time gaining access to those core members. Now Verdant, they've got the Elder Dragon, the Baron spawns in about 15 seconds. They might use up this time to secure both buffs and then push into the space. And with both of those power buffs, both of those mega buffs, they should be able to end the game. AAB, it's going to take a miracle from this point. It's difficult because they can't really contest this Baron, you've got to imagine, just because the Elder Dragon's still going to be ticking over and... If they lose both of the buffs, then as you mentioned, it's nigh on impossible to beat a team with both of those buffs as AB look to stand strong under their last inhibitor tower. Will they be able to do so? Looking to clear out the wave. Ericsson actually takes a chunk of damage as the gun is cool. Trying to take down Blue and Bobas is going to take a couple of the shots. The last shot is going to go wide of everybody, but they've chased them away from the tower and it will fall down. Gunkus. Standing at the front, but it's taking a decent amount of damage, and he is very tanky. So, 
Got to imagine that's not great signs for the squishier members of AAB, but Verdant, they know what they want. They don't want to be taking down the base just yet. They're moving towards the Baron, and with minion waves coming through from all three lanes, Verdant, you've got to imagine it's going to be able to grab this. Yeah, should be able to. Baron should be a very, very free pickup here. And then once they get that, they should be able to return to the base. But I'm not really pushing the advantage with the Elder. I think a little bit scared of some of the poke, as we saw come out. And that's the mid lane inhibitor also respawned. So now looking, I mean, realistically, just pull the trigger, I think. You know, you've got Elder, you've got Baron, you're very far ahead. Obviously, you don't necessarily want to risk throwing the game, but if you still got 20 seconds left on this Elder buff, use it. Or 30 seconds left on the Elder buff, use it. Don't be afraid. If you can find Blue Bent, if you can find Ribery, who's... Got cleanse, but no flash. Should be an easy toss. Should be in the clear. But let's see how slow they play this one out, Verdant. Winter finds Gunkus, but won't actually be able to see, see him due to that passive, but Mundo no longer has it. But again, not really a priority target. Iron Keys is looking for someone. Bobas whiffs with the knockup as the fight kicks off. Valkyrie's already in the back line as Blueman will be able to get away, but caught up on the fountain steps. Everyone else goes down. Gunkus is standing strong, but the execute comes through. Jarvan actually survives a second longer, but there's the kill coming on through. Verdant finally pick up their first win of the split and can tie AAB to still search for it. Welcome to the league, Verdant. Very strong looking performance against, of course, AB. Not looking too great, but looking better than previous days, you have to say. Uh, I think as well, specifically in the early game, a lot of proactivity. A lot of what we was asking for from yesterday, uh, or uh, Tuesday rather, actually met up, uh, met upon. Uh, so, you know, AB, yes, I think going to be disappointed that they lost this game. I think they definitely had, you know, the, the means and the tools available to them to try and pull this win uh, out of the hat away from, from Verdant. It just wasn't quite there for them. I think Verdant just pulled too far ahead in the mid game. I think that sort of 20 minute uh, to 30 minute passage of play was really where Verdant came online with their composition. Uh, they really pushed the limits uh, of their lead. And I just feel like as well, not to pick on it too much, but I feel like Ribery going for that mortal reminder, not having the IE on that third item, definitely made a difference in some of those, I think, especially before that first Baron fight, and especially that mid lane fight as well, where I guess technically I don't think he would have had the three items, but either way, I think delaying it for so long was definitely a big hit uh, to the damage profile of AB. Uh, and they weren't quite able uh, to deal with some of that backline dive as well when it came down to it. We're going to talk to both of the teams to see what their take is, starting off with, of course, Verdant, the victors. So don't go anywhere. We'll be back in a couple of minutes.